Hello. A lot of you sent me this KF21 prototype comparison. Uh, I think it's a video from 2023 and 2025. We're going to take a look and see what we can learn. KF21 is a cool fighter. Uh, Gen 4.5 or 5. It's kind of weird because it looks a lot like a Raptor. But in the early versions, I think later in the EX, they're going to change this. But early versions, it's all uh, external stores. So different stealth characteristics, but it's a really cool uh, South Korean produced fighter that uh, is interesting to look at. And we're going to talk about some of the features and break down what we see on these two videos. KF-21 prototype four and five air shows in Japan and the world by Tonkatsu 298. This was published uh, October 31st as a demo flight comparison. Um, you can see right off the bat, the square intakes, it's got ground power hooked up. Uh, HUD, canopy bow, you know how I feel about canopy bows. Uh, IFF interrogator, Erst, infrared search and track. So that's a cool feature to have. Uh, 20 mic mic gun, so it does have a gun. So there it is, Adex 2023 24, prototype four and five. Yeah, oh, let me go back. You hear that howl? It sounds like a hornet because it's got hornet engines. The 414, 400, these are uh, indigenously produced, the 400k, but. It's still the same GE 400 engines. Uh, flight control bit, built-in test. Every digital flight control system in the world, uh, including the uh, F-16, F-18, F-22, F-35, they all do their own built-in test. So that's um, you know, standard stuff. That is a two-seat version. I don't like it. It needs to only be single seat. But I guess for training or if you wanted to put uh, like a strike package, and you wanted a Wizzo running drones or whatever, I guess you'd have that back there. But uh, pretty cool. You can see uh, the countries involved. Uh, obviously, again, this is a prototype. I think in 2026, they're going to get their first uh, 20 aircraft, and then they're going to later go to Block 2, and then the EX will then have uh, full stealth with internal weapons bays. But uh, this is kind of like their first hack at it, and that's, I mean, other than like the F-A-50, but this is a, a really cool airplane. Uh, helmet mounted display. It looks like a Jehemix of some sort for the guy in the front. Guy in the back or girl in the back's not doing that. So normal HUD, um, recline, partially reclined seat. Uh, like I said, you got the canopy bow there with the Erst and then the, the intakes. Twin engine. And I guess this is the newer one. And I like the kind of the ghost paint job. That's pretty cool. Uh, Non-thrust vectoring, as far as I know. I don't think it's got 2D or 3D or anything like that. But good-looking airplane. The D model, not as much. But, you know, it's a, it's a definitely a well-designed uh, aesthetically. But it looks like, like a mini Raptor. Although it is a big airplane. I mean, I think the max, max gross takeoff weight is like 44,000 pounds, which is pretty heavy uh, more than the Viper. Uh, that's like Super Hornet numbers. But you can see there. So it's not, I mean, depressed. So it's not an internal weapons bay, but you've got kind of depressed slots. But then if they add any kind of pylons or anything, it's just like a normal fighter. But this is going to be multi-role, so... You know, you're not necessarily needing stealth. And again, if you're only talking homeland defense, I mean, you might not be interested in that for the later days of the war. Yeah, no thrust vectoring, but again, it's got quite a bit of thrust in general. Um, actually, no, I take that back. It's 54,000 pounds max gross takeoff weight uh, with 44,000 pounds for the uh, 56. So it's 56,000 pounds max gross takeoff weight. And then um, 44,000 pounds in afterburner with both engines, with the GE engines. GE makes good engines, so it's a good choice. 
And then again, this is an air show, so you're not going to get any of the you know features that we care about in 2025, the the beeps and squeaks. But I mean, obviously, it's just going to be cool for performance wise. Min radius turn there. Uh, I think Mach 1.8 is what they have it. Uh, 1.81. I don't know. But I'm guessing a 9G fighter. I would assume based on that min radius turn. Uh, we also don't know the alpha, but without thrust vectoring and the leading edge extensions, I doubt it's as maneuverable as like a Super Hornet or a Hornet, but it's still a very capable aircraft. You know, I mean, with the F-22, which is this looks a lot like, the thrust vectoring and the thrust to weight ratio is what gives you that turn performance uh, instantaneous and sustained. Um, I don't know that this is going to be, this is going to be probably more like the F-35, if I had to guess, as far as turn performance. But you can do a lot with uh, flight control computers now, uh, which is what the F-35 does. doesn't need thrust vectoring. just needs thrust. And Yeah, I mean, it looks very similar in this view to the F-35. So probably 9G, one good, one 9G turn, and then um, higher AOA, but nothing like a Hornet. That ghost paint job. That looks cool. There you go. Very cool demo. Very well, well flown. Aileron rolls, always important in combat because I was inverted. Uh, air refueling on the spine there. So not probe and drogue, but a boom like the uh, U.S. Air Force would use, which makes sense for compatibility purposes. Uh, again, there's the um, kind of carve outs for the missiles there on the uh, belly. That's a good look. I mean, it's a good looking airplane. There's no doubt about that. That is, I mean, the best of all worlds there. It's like an eagle, like a modern eagle, I guess. But as like this, going talking about the eagle, you know, the EX has shown us that you don't necessarily need um, the leading edge devices, uh, leading edge extensions, or canards, or thrust vectoring to be super maneuverable. Uh, and stuff like that at high alpha. So, uh, like I said, the FCS can do a lot. But I don't think there's any of that in this demo. Um, I think it's pretty much just a lot of high G turns. Yeah, there's a slow speed demo, which is really not that slow. I love that paint job, though. Can't say that enough. Big cockpit, too. A lot of room. Same demo. Both years, it looks like they did pretty much the same profile. And then the landing. I, you know, I like I said, I don't see anything that that screams super maneuverability or anything like that out of it. It looks like it's just going to be a multi-role workhorse. You know, bridging that 4.5 to 5 gen or 5th gen gap. Um, highly competent uh, design pilots. Uh, there's the two-seat version, I guess, is what they were trying to show us here. Uh, it definitely is a, you know, when you're making your own jets, and they for a while they had a very good pace. Yeah, that, that cockpit looks a lot like the F-35. As far as the space and design and stuff, that looks very similar to the F-35, minus, you know, the HUD, which I think it's good to have the HUD, to be honest with you, other than just relying on the helmet. But it does have a helmet. I don't think he's wearing one right here. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool demo, pretty cool airplane. Uh, again, there's the Erst. I don't know where this I haven't seen the speed brake on it yet. If it's on the uh, spine, I would assume, like the Hornet. Um, it doesn't look like it's the clamshell like the F-16. Canopy opens the correct direction. Big fan of that, which makes me wonder why you need the canopy bow, because you don't doesn't. There's no uh, CFS. There's no canopy fracture system. So, looks like they do jettison the canopy to eject. So, why'd you need the canopy bow, man? You'd have more visibility if you got rid of that. But 
It's like a very spacious cockpit in general. Uh, and you can see there uh, that hose right here. That's the PBG, pressure breathing under G. So it is probably a 9G jet. Um, that will give him, what that does is it inflates a bladder in your helmet. It pushes you closer to your mask. And it's, it's pressure breathing uh, when it starts to sense that you're pulling higher Gs forces more air to keep your lungs inflated because if you exhale and that's it you're at nine g's it's really hard to get more air back in your lungs so that helps out with that physiological uh issues yeah oh he disconnects it i never disconnected my pvg it always stayed connected so that's an interesting way but i guess he's doing the old navy thing where he hooks it to his uh, harness and i guess it needs a ladder but cool demo It'd be interesting to see kind of more high alpha stuff if it's capable to do it and kind of what kind of turn performance. Obviously, it's still a prototype, so uh, I'm sure the real capabilities are classified, but airshow stuff is just for funsies, right? What matters is the sensors, which has got an ESA radar, which is shown to be pretty capable, small drones, real far out, uh, that it has already done. Uh, can it go high, go fast, do good work? I think Mach 1.8, which is very similar to the F-35. Um, I'm interested to see how they employ it, but again, being able to indigenously produce their own fighter, especially, you know, this 4.5 to 5 gen, and then it'll be 5th gen when they go to the EX, is awesome, man. I think it's cool. It's a cool demo. Thanks for sending me that, and, um, you know, let me know in the comments what you think, because always interested in hearing what other people think about stuff like that i'm just a fighter pilot so I'm not an engineer so i just go off of you know what i see and kind of you know if i were flying it what would i want i didn't see whether it's a side stick or not but i'm assuming it is which i think is a, a good design so uh but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this episode thanks for watching see you next time mm -hmm.